quite often when you're working with data and trying to find stories, you're going to need to use formulas. In this video, I'm going to walk through some different formulas and the functions that you can use to get answers to different types of questions you might have of your data. And I'm going to use this data, the gender pay gap data, which is published by um, gov.uk, uh, the gender pay gap service. Companies have been required to supply this information for a few years now. And there's an interactive site where you can find particular organizations and find out about their particular pay gap. But you can also download the raw data behind this. You'll see a link here to download all gender pay gap data. And this is the data that I'm going to use. Now I'm gonna not use the current year. The current year is 2023-24 because this will only be partial data. You can see it's a much smaller file than the others. Um, and really it's only towards the end of the financial year around March and April that you get a full data set of all companies because that's the deadline for them to submit. So I'm going to use the last full year's worth of data, which is 22-23, and download that from here. Uh, remember, you uh, need to use a browser like Chrome or Firefox or right click on this and uh, download that linked data to your machine. Don't use Safari because it will open it up in the browser. Once you've downloaded the data, you open it up in Excel and it looks like this. There are a lot of columns here. Um, it goes on to column AA. So there are 27 different columns of data here. We're just gonna focus on the first few. Uh, in particular, we've got um, a, a column here, which is really the, the key column in the data, the mean hourly percentage difference in pay between men and women. So, we're going to do some calculations with this using some formulae uh, and uh, a good thing to do at this point is to just copy the data that we're interested in into a, a new sheet rather than work with this sheet that has 27 columns. So I'm going to save a copy of this. I'm going to save this as an Excel spreadsheet because um, that means we can have multiple sheets. And I'm gonna copy these first seven columns from A to G. A quick way to do that is to click and drag across the column letters like that. And then I can uh, copy that, right click and copy, or press Control and C, Command and C on a Mac. And I'm going to open a new sheet and I'm going to paste that data into this new sheet. So this is going to be my my analysis. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see that better. You can see we have an employer name, column, ID address, postcode, company number, SIC codes, and the uh, the difference in wages. Um, now, when you download a, a piece of data like this, it's useful to check. Uh, to read around the data and you'll find information about this data on the web page. Um, for example, this difference, this is basically the difference in the average hourly wage between men and women. Um, if it's a positive figure, then that means it's in favor of men. So this particular company, um, the average hourly wage for men is 9.7% higher than the average wage for women at that company. If it's a negative figure like this one, it means that women earn more than men. So in this particular organization, First Hair Home Limited, uh, First Home Care Limited, women earn 3.2% more on average per hour than men. So we've got all of the, the data here. There's lots of data. We can skip to the end and we've got 10,830 rows of this. What if we just want to know the overall um, average pay gap across all of these 10,000 companies? Well, we can do that using a function called average. Um, Excel and Google Sheets have 
uh, hundreds of functions that will perform different functions, perform different recipes with data. Some of them are about performing calculations. Others are about extracting information or splitting it up. Uh, and the average function is one of the most commonly used and, and a good one to start with. Now, if you're going to use a function you or do any sort of calculation in Excel, you always start with an equal sign. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Oops. And then uh, you, you type the name of the function that you're using. So in this case, it's going to be average. Now, all functions are followed by brackets. And inside the brackets, you need to put any ingredients that you're going to use for that function. So average is a, a function that needs a bunch of numbers and you can put them in individually or you can select cell references. Um, but the most common way to do this is to select a, a range of cells. So you can click and drag like this. And you'll see it puts the first cell G2, then a colon and then the last cell G8 to indicate all cells from G2 to G8. Uh, once you've put the ingredients in, you close the brackets and press enter and it will calculate the average of the cells that you've specified. Now I've just done that for, for eight cells to begin with, or seven cells actually, um, just to show you the process. But really we want the whole of this column and um, to do that we don't really want to be kind of dragging all the way down to the end to select them. There's a much easier way to do this. And this is how you do it. So again, we're going to type a formula. So we start with equals, then the function we're using is average. You'll notice it pops up here. So that's a good sign. You're using a function that it, it uh, that exists. Then open the brackets. And what we want to average is all the numbers in column G. And the quick way to do that is to click on the G at the top of column G, and that will just select the whole column. You can select a whole column by putting its letter and then a colon and then the letter again. So that's just going to look at all the numbers in column G and calculate an average. Close the brackets, press enter, and we can see that the average company's uh, pay gap is just over 13%. So at the average company, uh, men earn on average 13% more per hour. Now, when you do this, you, you should always check at the bottom of your column there isn't any grand total or, or other numbers below this that are you going to include in this calculation. A quick way to skip to the bottom of a column as long as it's full is to hold down Control or Command on a Mac and press the down arrow on your keyboard and that will take you to the last cell in that column before any empty cells. If your column isn't full, then you can just pick a column that is full, for example, the first column. So we can see that this is still a company. There's no grand total and there's no uh, uh, data underneath this that might be included in this calculation. Otherwise, if it was, we'd have to do a click and drag or delete the other data to uh, remove it from the calculation. So this is our average. It's important to be clear about what you are averaging here. So this isn't the average worker that earns, uh, it isn't that the average male worker earns 13% more than the average female worker because different companies have different numbers of workers. What we're talking about here is the average company has a pay gap of 13%. So that's the, the average. Um, there are other functions that we can use as well. We can um, not just use a mean average, which is what the average function calculates. We can use a median. So to do that, we would do equals median. And same again, open brackets. Select the cells that you want to use in this calculation. And then close the brackets and press enter. So the median uh, pay gap at companies is a little bit lower at 12%. You can also use a mode. A mode is the most commonly appearing value. 
the function for that is mode. Again, open brackets immediately after you name the function. Select the cells you want to use in the calculation. Close the brackets and press enter. This one takes a little bit longer. And this is going to tell us the most common value in this column. So the most common uh, pay gap is exactly 15%. That's not especially useful in this particular example, but it might be useful if you're trying to work out the most common um, shoe size or the most uh, frequently scored number of goals in, in games, things like that. Another useful function or collection of functions are the count functions. So if I start typing, again, start with the equals and type count, you'll see Excel suggests a number of different um, count functions. We've got the basic count function. We've got count A, count blank, count if. I'm just going to use a few of these. The basic count function will count how many numbers there are in a range of cells. And this is useful for kind of checking how um, comprehensive the data is that you've got. Here we have 10,800 rows of data. We don't know how many of them have an SIC code in this column, column F. We can see this first column, this first uh, company rather, doesn't have an SIC code. Now, if you don't know what an SIC code is, you would then go off and search around to find out what are SIC codes, what is this data. And um, I can tell you an SIC code is, an, is a, an industry sector code. So what sector of the industry does this company operate in? So these next two companies do have codes that tell us what kind of area they operate in, but this one doesn't. So I want to know how many um, cells have uh, a number in them. So I can type of the value count. I can select the whole column. Again, this time it's F, so it's going to be F colon F, and then close the brackets and press enter. So that tells me that um, there are 6,713 cells in this column that have a number in them. I can also use count blank equals count blank will tell me how many cells are empty. Now this formula, uh, this function count blank, um, in this case we can't select the whole column. I'll show you why. If I select the whole column and press enter, I'm going to get over a million entries because this will count all the blank cells at the bottom of this table after the end of this table. So for count blank, I need to uh, specifically um, put the cells. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, find out what the last row is. So it's 10, 8, 30. Okay. So what I'm going to do is from F2 to F10, 8, 30, if I remember that correctly. So I'm going to manually type out what it is. So that tells me that 800 cells in that range are blank. But we know we've got over 10,000 here. These two numbers don't add up to 10,000, the number of numbers and the number of blank cells. And the reason for that is that some of these cells don't contain numbers, or at least information that's stored as numbers. Some of them contain information that's stored as text. And you should be able to see that in the way that these cells are aligned differently. In these two cells, it's aligned to the right, which means that Excel is treating these as numbers. In the next few cells, it's now aligned to the left. And you'll notice that these are cells where there's more than one number with a comma separating them. And that's why Excel is treating that differently. Um, it's not interpreting this as a number, but rather as a list of codes. And actually, that's how it should be interpreted, because these aren't numbers that you can perform calculations with. They're just codes indicating a category. So what we have here is a mix of cells that are treated as numbers and, and t cells that are treated as text. We can count both of those with another count formula, another count function called count A. 
count A counts anything. So numbers and text. Again, open the brackets after the function and select the whole column. And then close the brackets and press enter. And here we have uh, 10,030 rows that contain anything rather than being blank. Now that's encouraging because if we add that to our count of blank cells, we get 10,830, which is the number of rows that we have. But we need to be a little bit careful here because this formula here is also counting the column heading SIC codes. And we probably don't want to actually count that. And likewise, if we say we've got 10,830 rows of data, we would be wrong. We've got 10,829 rows of data and one header row. So when you do use count A, if you're using it across the whole of the column, then just um, subtract one from the total to get uh, to, to subtract the heading that's going to be counted as well. So those are some useful functions that we can use in um, looking across the whole data set. And it, you'll notice that I've put these in a column that's separate from the main table. That's quite useful to do because it means that if you want to do anything with this table, like sort it or filter it, you can do that separately to these calculations. If I apply a filter, it's only going to apply to this table. Excel sees this as a different table. However, we might want to use functions to add some data to the information we've got here. And we can do that by adding a new column at the end. So let's see if this, if, if there is a gender pay gap at each, um, at each company. Um, and we can, let's call this, actually, no, let's, let's do the SIC code uh, column. So is SIC code a number? Okay. And I'm going to use a function which is is number. Again, this is part of a family of functions that test if a cell is a particular type of data. You can see is blank, um, is number, uh, we've also got is text, and so on. So is number, then the brackets are opened after it, and then we can select a single cell in this case, close the brackets and press enter. And this is gonna return, it's gonna result in a value that's either true or false. So if I copy that, and paste it in the cell below, it's now going to look at the cell to the left of that in the same column and perform the same calculation. So it's going to tell us that that cell is true, that that cell is a number rather, that that's true. So as you copy these, uh, any sort of formula down, you'll notice that the cell references are changed so that they're relative to the position of the place where you put the formula. And instead of just copying and pasting, we can hover over the bottom corner of the cell. And when we get the black cross, we can click and drag to copy it down as well. Or even better, as long as the cell, the, the column next to it is completely full, we can hover over, uh, when we get that black cross, we can double click and that will copy all the way down as long as there is something to the left of it, as long as that, um, that column is full. So we now have a whole column of um, extra information about this data, which we might be able to use as a filter or in a pivot table, something like that. Let's repeat that again. I'm going to insert a new column and here we go. Um, we can say no SIC code. So this time we're going to use is blank. Equals at the start, um, is blank. And again, we're gonna just select the one cell in the same row, close the brackets. And again, I can copy that 
all the way down the column. So this is quite useful. We're starting to um, expand our data to, to create some extra information. Um, another thing we can do, these are, these are true false formulas or functions. We can um, extract part of data. So if I insert another column here, um, we've got a couple of columns here, postcode and SIC code, which um, if you read about those codes, codes are quite useful. They're quite often broken down into different parts. Um, postcodes, for example, the first two, first one or two letters in a postcode refer to an overall area. Um, and then uh, as you carry on, it becomes more detailed. So um, let's see if I can find one that I know here. SO, I, I'm guessing is Southampton, maybe. Um, if it was D, that would mean Derby. If it was B, that would mean Birmingham. If it was BL, it would mean uh, Bolton and so on. So we might want to just extract part of a postcode. Likewise, the SIC codes, the first couple of digits give us a, a broad indication of the kind of category and um, then the rest of the codes are more detailed. So we might just want the first two numbers. Now, we can do this um, with a formula called left. So let's try first two uh, SI code first, oops, first two numbers. Okay, and I'll I'll do it on this one because actually I'll do it on this one because um, that that actually has some information in. So if I type equals the function I'm going to use here is left. Um, you can have right, you can have mid. These are similar functions that will extract text from the left in this case, or you can extract from the right or from the middle if you use the other similar functions. This needs two ingredients. The other functions that we've used so far have only needed one ingredient, but this needs, um, first of all, the cell that you're going to extract from. And then the second ingredient is the number of characters you want to extract from the left. And because we've got two ingredients, we need to put a separator between them. In uh, my English version of Excel, that separator is a comma. If you're using a, a Spanish or some other versions of Excel, you would use a semicolon to separate the two ingredients or multiple ingredients. So I'm going to grab the first two characters. And then I'm going to close the brackets to end the list of ingredients. So 85 is what it's come up with. 85 is the first two characters of this piece of text. You'll um, notice that this is a whole piece of text. So it's only going to work on the very first few characters. It's not going to get as far as the second or third codes. But you'll notice that both these codes start with 85. All three of these start with 93. This one's a little bit different, 8, 6, and 8, 8. Uh, this one is very different. But we're just interested for now in the first SIC code. There are some techniques we could use to try and split out these SIC codes, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So let's click and drag that up. This will work on a number as well. And then when we go up to the blank cell, it's just going to return a blank result. So we can now copy that all the way down. And now we've got this whole bunch, this column full of uh, SIC code, first two numbers. This is useful because we might want to aggregate this information by industry sector. And the SIC codes are first of all too specific to allow us to do that. We, we don't want very specific industry sectors, we just want broad sectors. And also we've got these um, multiple codes which will all be treated differently. So even if this list of codes had 85200 in it and this one um, had it as, in as well in a different position, we wouldn't be able to pivot them both together. It wouldn't uh, treat them as the same thing because these are slightly different. But we can pivot on this column which has the first two numbers. So for example, Let's do a quick pivot table. 
let's have the first two numbers and let's have the mean hourly percent. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Um, and I'm, uh, again, this is beyond the scope of, of this tutorial, but you at the moment, this is adding up all of the pay differences, but I can change that to an average. So this is within this particular sector, what is the um, average pay gap? You'll notice that we've got one twice, so that's something we would have to clean up later. But for now, let's just see which sector has the biggest one, and it's 93. So we would go off and find out, okay, what sector is uh, has SIC codes beginning with 93, and what sector has codes beginning with 66. But hopefully that gives you an idea of how functions and formulas can be used in Excel to both give you overall figures and questions, answers to questions that are about the data overall. So we can find out the overall average or the overall number of missing uh, cells that are missing data. But you can also use functions and formulas to add data to every single row that specify whether that row meets a particular condition, like whether it's a number or whether it's blank, or we can use it to extract information as well. There's one more formula, one more function that I want to show you, which is even more powerful, and that is we can start to classify our data as well. So we could say, um, whether a number is above or below a particular threshold using an if formula. So let's say um, pay gap favors men. Uh, there's a simpler way to do this, but I'm going to use the, the, the way that uses a function, and that function is if. And this takes three ingredients. The first is a test, it is a is a logical test, whether something is true or false. And then the second and third ingredient are what you want to put in this cell if the result of that test is true, and what you want to put in this cell if the result of that test is false. This will make more sense as I go through it. But one thing to point out, which you might have noticed as you start to open the brackets in Excel and also in Google Sheets, it will tell you broadly what ingredients you need. Um, it might use jargon, so a logical test may not be massively clear to you, but it will certainly help you remember if you've used it before. So the logical test I'm going to have here is, is this cell greater than zero? Okay, so if it is, then that means that this is a pay gap in favour of men. If it's less than zero, it favours women. So that's the first ingredient. I now put a comma to move on to the second ingredient. And what I want it to say is I want to put some text here that's going to appear in this cell if that's true, if it is greater than zero. And because this is text, I need to put it in quotation marks. So let's say cat favors men, close quotation marks. That's the second ingredient. Now I put a comma to move on to the third ingredient. You can see it moves it becomes bold in this list underneath. And this is also going to be a string of text in quotation marks. And I'm not going to put gap favors women because if the gap is zero, then it doesn't. That's not true. All we know is that it doesn't favor men. And again, that's quite important that you, that you are clear what you're measuring. So the test here is, is it greater than zero? If it's not greater than zero, it could still be zero. So it, it might not favor men or women. We just know it doesn't favor men. So that's our result. And then again, if we copy that down, it's going to apply that to each row in turn. So those are just some functions um, and some formulas that are using those functions and an example of how they can be used in uh, in adding to your data. There's lots more that you can do with functions and formulae. For example, you can combine more than one function 
uh, combine functions with each other. You can nest them inside each other. Um, it can get really quite complicated, but that's just what I wanted to introduce in terms of using functions. A good tip with using these is when you come across any sort of problem or challenge in using Excel or Google Sheets, search for a function that solves that problem. Chances are that someone's already created that and it's been installed in Excel or Sheets and you can just use that function to solve your problem. So search for Google Sheets function and whatever it is that you're trying to do or Excel function and what you're trying to do. Thank you.